hello critters welcome to today's 3d print today we are going to go over the upgrades that i made to the ender 2 you heard that right ender 2 and since i never did this before in the past we're going to do an analysis video on the ender 2 as if i was going to send them feedback on how i would improve it so here we have our ender 2 what are the changes that we made to it? Well, first thing, we changed the power supply. So it now has a Meanwell 17 amp 12 volt LRS 200-12 power supply. The advantage of this power supply, no cooling fan, which means it's silent, which is wonderful. I also plan to design a little case to allow me to mount that power supply just like that next to the printer. I also put a piece of foam using double stick tape. I used the actual packaging the printer came with and I cut a piece of foam out of it and now it's sitting on top of, let me pick this up so you can see it, it's sitting on top of a piece of foam. That stops any resonant transmission or reduces resonant transmission of sounds from the printer to your table because your table will act as a speaker. We upgraded the springs. So now we have all the nice yellow die compression springs on this a lot better I'm going to put a piece of wham bam on here but I couldn't find my Ender 2 wham bam they do sell they do still sell this size it's the 165 millimeter wham bam we also put in stepper dampers which are those things right there as well as heat sinks you probably don't need the heat sinks but might as well since now you're no longer getting the direct conduction of heat from the stepper to the frame of the printer you are now isolating the stepper from the printer so this is going to get a little hotter not enough to be a problem but it costs nothing to add the heat sink so you might as well now same thing on here stepper damper heat sink we also replace the feed unit this is the feeder with the aluminum version. This one is one without the compression fitting. It uses this plastic compression fitting, which so far works fantastically. I like that. One last modification I do still want to make is to drill a hole in that entry there to accept a small piece of PTFE tube so that this acute angle doesn't eventually cut into the aluminum, because it will. It will eventually cut the aluminum. It'll take a while, but it will do it. Capricorn tubing. I actually had my first victim of Capricorn tubing. One of the problems you can have with Capricorn is if your filament is not within spec, the tolerance of the hole inside the Capricorn is much tighter, which reduces slop. But if your filament, you can actually see it. See how the filament gets bigger right here? Yeah, you bet it. Jammed inside the tube. <laughs> Almost made it to the hot end, but yeah, that's a bit oversized right there. Uh, we also did a complete rework of the hot end. So this is my um, Ender adapter on the universe. I'm going to remodel this a little bit. It's really annoying when I'm recording videos and I have to yawn. <laughs> so this is a Winsin dual ball bearing brushless 30 millimeter fan. And this is a Winsin dual ball bearing brushless 40 millimeter blower. This is just like the ones you have on your Ender 3 and your CR10 12 volt version because this is a 12 volt printer. So I've been playing with the wires here. I had a break in the wires. That's why they're so sloppy. They were neater. Um, I have to resolder the connection on the back of the fan. I played with it so much that I eventually broke it. It works. I got it working now. That's why I have this little setup here puts pressure on it keeps it working works great as you can see here's a print I got from it nice and clean zero issues this is a drunk domo you stick a dime in there and it's a bottle opener I print four of them at a time no problems um, these fans are substantially quieter than the stock fans you, you basically can't hear this machine run now uh, I can actually turn it on and I'll even turn on the other fan. Let's see, control, temperature, fan speed. There you go. That is all fans going, and it is damn near silent. We also replaced the brain board fan inside here in the brain case. That is a 40 millimeter noise blocker fan, 2800 RPM, 2900 RPM. I actually have it backwards. I can feel the warm air coming out the front here. And it's supposed to suck that way, so i got to turn that fan around, but it works. Totally silent. 
you can hear a, a teeny tiny sound of the fans and the stepper motors basically don't make any noise I will turn them on so you can hear them run except for the Z but the Z does not normally move fast so that's normally a non-issue so all fans are going and silent baby except Z but again under normal conditions Z doesn't move this fast so you're not going to hear Z so there's no reason to put a stepper damper on Z and you can't actually at least I can't think of a way to do it but anyway there you go absolutely silent Ender 2 and there everything turned off and of course no fan in the power supply so it does not make any noise that's actually the reason I don't want to put the power supply underneath because I want to make sure this can breathe and bonus the meanwhile power supply means this thing heats up super freaking fast I mean like stupid fast <laughs> uh, the bed heats up to 45 in like 60 seconds if that not even maybe 45 seconds it's crazy fast and I have confirmed I could reach 110 degrees on that bed so this thing can do ABS which is really cool is there anything else I almost forgot we also have an LED so this LED is powered when this um, this fan here is powered. So it's that, that's always powered, so the LED is always powered. So now we have an adjustable LED that we can aim where we want. I wrapped it in a little heat shrink tubing so it doesn't blind you looking at it. You can also sand the end of the LED flat, and that'll make it more of a floodlight instead of a spotlight. I still need to do that. When I rebuild this hot end again, I want to move this fan a little bit more that way. And I also want to open up this channel in here just a tiny bit doesn't need it but I want to so I'm gonna optimize that a little bit for better airflow although so far zero issues you know 10 hour print no problem all these parts you can get on Amazon um, there's a you actually get a kit that comes with like this part the tubing the springs um, then there's another kit that you can get with the dampers and whatnot if you're satisfied with the performance of the stock electronics and have no desire to change the stock electronics for significantly less money you can add these things to it I think the fans were 15 bucks and 20 bucks but that was a five pack so do the math accordingly to figure out the per fan price um, you're probably looking at five to eight bucks if you buy them individually just make sure they are a decent name brand make sure they are dual ball bearing and make sure they're brushless that's the trick for getting it to be super quiet like this the dual ball bearing brushless is why you don't hear these fans so changes I would make to this printer well first of all um, from the factory I would like to see them include the parts cooling fan I would like to see them include the passive meanwhile power supply that makes it substantially quieter I'd like to see them include the metal feeder I'd like to see them modify it to include the PTFE tube to handle the acute angle. I would like to see the knobs be a little bit bigger. Because they can be a pain. Well, actually, these two are pretty easy to adjust. This one can be a pain to adjust. You really want the bed all the way forward. Because then you can reach the knob right here. What would be nice is to move this control panel this way. About an inch. About that far. Just extend the, don't don't change the printer itself, just extend the acrylic left an inch, so one inch wider, and move this whole box one inch over. That would make it so much easier to get to this. You can see it's really hard to get to this one adjuster down here. Uh, beyond that, this printer doesn't really need much in the way of improvements. It's, it's just a, it's a good machine. Oh, and please, for the love of God, get rid of the cap screws that they are the mushroom button head screws that you use to attach this arm and replace it with crown or cap screws because the mushroom button head screws suck so bad they're just so bad beyond that not too much I would do to improve this printer there you go if you're curious about all the upgrades we made to the Ender 2 and suggestions that I would give as far as feedback that's it I love the little tiny screen on the Ender 2. It's a clear, crisp, black and white screen. It's just nice. Um, maybe having that tilted would be nice. That would be a nice feature to add. So that screen was at a, a small angle. A little easier to read. Not a huge deal. Really not a big deal. Not something I'd worry about. Um, oddly enough, the plastic feeder unit that comes with the Ender 2 is good. 
unlike the current generation plastic feeder unit, the one that came on the Ander 2 was much more solid, meaning you don't have to replace it. It works fine. Um, just be careful threading in the compression fitting when you use the plastic one because it self-threads into the plastic, which means as soon as that compression fitting reaches and butts up against the, um, the frame of the feeder, stop. If you keep tightening it, you will strip it, and very easily, because it's just self-threading into the plastic. There's no threads there. So there's no, also no stop, meaning you keep turning, it'll keep turning and just tear the plastic out. But overall, that plastic feeder unit is built a heck of a lot better than the current generation feeder unit. You're not going to break that arm. The original, um, the CR10 Ender 3 one, the plastic arm that has the idler um, gear, this arm right here, it tends to break either here or here. And when it cracks, you don't even really notice it. You just notice your printer stops feeding. And it's because that arm broke and now the um, idler bearing is not pushing the filament into the drive gear. And that's hard to notice if you don't know what you're looking for. I had that happen on my Ender 5 after about 1,500 hours of printing. That arm cracked just from stress. That's probably not going to happen with the Ender 2. The Ender 2 one's pretty good. But I would still upgrade to the metal one. It's just nicer. It's better. And it costs like $11. <laughs> it's cheap. Um, everything is linked down below. The Thingiverse listing for that um, uh, bracket for the end to allow you to mount a parts cooling fan on here. Use the nut and bolts that came with the um, that, that hold the 40 millimeter fan in the metal shroud. It's nuts and bolts. Keep those. Use two of them to attach this fan, nut and bolt style. You'll have to drill the holes out a little bit to make a fit. And you also have to drill the holes out on the fan a little bit. It's not a big deal. Don't over tighten. If you over tighten, the fan will kick out like this if you over tighten the top. So only tighten it enough to hold it in place so it doesn't kick out. Beyond that, you're good to go. You saw the print I made. Got my beautiful little drunk domo. You put your dime in there, and it is a bottle opener. That's it. You guys have a great day. I will see you on the next stream.